All right. Well, hello, uh, cousin Paul and uh, godchild Xavier and Gabe and whoever else this video is working for. Um, I think I'm getting some feedback, but that's okay. Where is it? Oh, it's in that thing. I can turn this off. Goodness. Maybe that'll work. I think that works. Oh, it's coming on this thing now. Okay. Let's see here. Turn this all the way down. I don't hear any feedback. All right. Very good. Okay. Wonderful. Hello, Paul, Xavier, Gabe, and whoever else wants to view this video. I'm, you know who I am. <laughs> I'm Bert Miller, cousin Bert, uh, um, your godfather, Xavier, and uh, your, your uh, weird cousin, uh, Paul. Um, I have your present uh, right here. And this present is a special present. It's, it's a good present. Um, it's a little extensive, perhaps you might say. Um, but I think you'll have great joy in it. And uh, I hope it lasts you for a while. And, and I hope you enjoy it. Uh, at least putting it together, you know, I don't need to worry about what happens to this present. You know, don't worry about that at all. Just enjoy it. And uh, if you can do what I'm going to do with it, great, wonderful. If not, then I understand. You know, so don't, don't worry about that. But I know you wanted some tiny troops. And this is a good starter box for tiny troops. Um, Let's go ahead and open it up and see what it is inside. Yeah, I'm opening your Christmas present. <laughs> I think it's kind of funny. But uh, don't worry, I'm sending it to you. <laughs> so, yeah, this is the Black Powder Waterloo starter set for Napoleonics. And uh, when you open it up, you'll see a couple of things here. First of all, you get to see the black powder rule book, which I think we could use, actually, Paul. I, I really do. And Xavier, this would be a lot of fun to play with that. And there's a quick started, quick starter guide. There's a box here with uh, quick reference sheets on it, so you can cut it out if you want to. And then what you've been looking for, what you've been really excited about, these are the miniatures right here. These are British soldiers. And uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take one of these miniatures, just one, and I'm going to show you how to paint it, what to do to paint it, because I think that's the most important thing uh, that you can do with this stuff. And, of course, take them out and play with them. But in order to do that, you need to put them together. So that's what we're going to show you uh, today. In fact, these aren't the British. These are the Hanoverians, which are your culture, actually, in Germany from Hanover. Uh, some of these guys might have uh, been uh, relatives, Millers, perhaps, but who knows. Uh, but here, let's see, wait a second here. I see all Hanoverians here. Just a second, I'll find the British. Here they are. No, those are French. French, 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 French. British have to be over here. So let's see here. Oh, there we go. All right, yeah. These are British. You can tell by their hats. Their hats are a little better. A uh, little, little, uh, um, they're shakos rather than uh, slouch hats. See? Just so you can see the difference there. That is a slouch hat right there. It's got like a little bill on it, sort of like a baseball hat. Let me see if I can zoom it in here a little bit. That's a slouch hat there, right? Okay. And that is a shako. Like a little top, like, like a little hat that just kind of stands straight up. So, anyway, uh, we're going to do a British guy because I like doing them. And because I think it's, you know, a little, little easy to do. Maybe a little complicated, but uh, it'll be good. So, throw, put all this aside and we'll just do one. One figure. One figure only. The Zilly. So, I'm going to zoom this in here so you can see what I'm doing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So what you need to do this is you need a piece that's called a uh, sprue cutter. And I'm sending one of these along with you. I got several of them, so don't worry about that. And then what you do 
is you take the sprue cutter and you take the flat edge of it, that's this edge right here, where it's going to pinch really well, and you use that right up against the model and just cut off one little bit right there. And so now, as you can see, that is bending out a little bit. And you can, at that point, kind of just work it a little bit, but I, I like to come in and actually snip off the bottoms of it too. And Xavier, you can have your dad help you with this. Um, he can teach you how to do it himself if he wants to, uh, but uh, that's how I do it. And he gets a nice flat, see, he can stand up now, you know. But he doesn't have a head yet, or, or his backpack, and that's what we're going to do next, okay? So let's do that. I think I'm going to use this head right here because it'll help me explain something else as well. So you just very easily just snip the head right off of the sprue, lay it aside, and then I'm going to use this uh, this backpack right here. Okay, this pack. See, he's got his canteen, his cartridge um, box. Oh, you can't see it. Okay, let's see here. There's his canteen. And over there, there's his cartridge box, and there's his backpack, and there, that's his great coat all rolled up right there. So, yeah. I'm just going to twist it off like this. And there, now that's off. So, now I'm going to put this back in the box, because I'm not going to do any more of these, and this, this miniature is going to come along with the box when I send it in a couple of days. So, putting it back in the box. All right, now we need to clean this guy up a little bit, okay? because there's a little bit of stuff in between there and I'm gonna have to pause the video because I gotta get the right the right tools over here just one minute now what we're gonna do is we got ourselves what's called a slicer or a box cutter I don't know what you want to call it but a, a scalpel maybe you might say and I'm not sending one of these with this box because I figure you can get one of your own and perhaps you want to make sure that you're, actually not perhaps, you want to make sure that your mom and dad actually do this for you, Xavier, because this is a very sharp tool, okay? The other tool is not too sharp unless you put your finger in it, <laughs> but this one right here will slice into your finger. So, um, so I'm just basically scraping out a little bit of that, that stuff that was left over um, from the uh, sprue when I snipped it out of its place. And I can come over here, I can do the same thing on the bottom here, which would be helpful, but it's not much, so you know, it's very flat. Then, if you take it really close here, you might be able to see what I'm talking about. And actually, I don't see very many on this. They must have done a good job with this. But um, sometimes there are what are called mold lines. Um, and if you see like a, a raised line on something, you might want to scrape that off. And we'll, we'll take a look at that in another minute here. Now we get to glue them together. Oh, first though, we should probably make sure that his neck attachment is uh, flat as well. That should be as flat as possible. Just slide that down a little bit. All right. So we got his head, we got his body, we're going to put the head right on top of there. To do that, we have something called plastic cement, um, this stuff right here, okay? And uh, this stuff right here you can get at Walmart, but I'm sending a tube with this box, probably this very same tube right here. And, uh, well, we just need a little bit of it to put his head on. I mean, just a wee bit. And so, um, and in fact, if you squeeze this right here, that plastic cement will just goop out and it'll be really gross. And so what you do is you take it really close to the thing you're gluing and you just squeeze it just a little bit and even then you're going to get too much but you only need just a little bit of glue on him and there you see that see that that's just just a wee bit you might not even be able to see it just a wee bit of glue but then let's see here if i can show you you just stick the head right on like that and you can see even some of then some of the glue just kind of gooped out a little bit. You got a little bit of time before it starts to bond, maybe like a couple of seconds before it really starts to bond. Uh, but then it is bonding and it'll actually, it actually melts the plastic a little bit so that 
it actually melts it together, which is pretty awesome stuff, if you ask me. But that's plastic cement. So we've got his head on. All right, cool. Now what we need to do is glue his backpack on. Very similar operation. You want to make sure that this top of the backpack, so, so right there, you can see that there's, maybe you can see this, I don't know, but you can see that there's a little bit of a mold line right there on the backpack. And I'm just going to come in here and scrape that off just a little bit. You don't want to scrape too much off, but right there, I got it all cleaned out. That's pretty good. And then down here too, if you want to do this, you don't really absolutely have to scrape mold lines and stuff like that, but it just, it makes for a better painting when you're done with it. So just telling you that up front. Okay. So then we got it all figured out. We put just a little bit of plastic cement right there. Yep. Just a little bead, like a little pinhead of them that is, is just enough. And then see, there's a little hole in the guy's back there. I don't know if you can see that. If I get it tilted in just the right way, you can see, yeah, see that there's a little hole in the guy's back there. There's a little bump on the backpack and that bump goes right into the hole like that. Boom. There. Now he's got his backpack on and he's ready to go. Well, only he needs to be painted first. So that's next. So that I've used some hot glue to glue our little guy onto one of these little plastic cups that you can get at Walmart. And uh, you can reuse these things. I also use them to uh, uh, put my water in for washing out my brushes and things like that. But that's so that if you're just painting one miniature, you can hold it easier and look at it in all angles. And, you know, and then when you're using your brush, it's easier to, to you know, paint him then. You know. So that's, that's the plan. Uh, but we also need to do what's called priming. And to do that, I have this stuff right here. You can use regular spray paint from Walmart, or you can just paint him black uh, using your black from your, from your paint. But um, I like to use this stuff here because it is, you know, good. You have to make sure that it is uh, flat black. You do not want this to be glossy or else it'll just be shiny and it won't be good so I'm going to quickly go and spray paint it and I'll come right back okay well scratch that I actually have decided to uh, do the uh, technique where you use black uh, paint to do it and that might be better for you to do it that way uh, but I'm going to send along some of the spray paint anyway the reason I'm doing it this way because I want to get it done for you and uh, also because uh, it would take a long time for it to actually dry uh, and stuff like that. These are the paintbrushes that I'm sending along with this too. Uh, these paintbrushes are pretty good uh, for the work. You just want a paintbrush that has a point on the tip and you can paint lots of details if you have a point on the tip. You know, so these brushes might last for painting everything you've got to paint. Maybe not, I don't know, but you know, they're pretty cheap so you can get them at Walmart. Um, and I also have here two things of, uh, of water. Um, i wet my brush just a little bit here, get it all ready. You know, that's a good thing to do. And then uh, what I'll do is I'll use a uh, little risk tray. See this thing right here? A little risk tray. I'll use this as my palette for this. So uh, it's important to take your paints and shake them up really good. Get all that pigment all shaken up so that it'll go on well. And then just pour a glob of it out here on the tray. It doesn't take too much because you're actually going to thin it with some water. And to do that, I have these little cool pipette things right here. So you just take a little bit of water, maybe put one or two drops in there and leave it in there. There you go. Then you mix it up so it's all thoroughly mixed there. Looks like that. You know, see it there? It's all mixed up. And then you just start putting a thin layer. So I'm going to get some of that paint off there and just do a thin layer of paint on this guy all over. You might ask yourself, well, Bert, why in the world are you painting him in 
black first. What are we doing? Well, what we're doing is we are coming up from the lowest color to the highest color. Uh, and uh, we're going to be doing something called shading. And it's going to look really cool when we get it all done. You have to just trust me. But black is the first step in my painting process. You could, if you wanted to, just jump right in and start painting the red and the white and the black and stuff like that uh, as, as they are. But I like doing it this way better uh, because this way I really get to see the model and uh, the, the lines on the model. You'll be able to see what I mean in just a little bit, hopefully. So there we go. I think he's pretty much done. And you notice I'm using a pretty big brush for this. You know, I can get it done pretty quick if this is the way you want to prime your models. I like priming in black because if I don't, if I, if I don't put paint on a spot, it just looks like it's a shadow. You know, if I prime it in white or just leave it gray, it'll be easy to tell if I me mess up. But here, it'll be harder to tell. So that's the deal. So we get to wash that off. And hopefully, hopefully, That'll dry pretty quickly. Now it might take a couple seconds to dry. I'll pause it for a second here. I can show you this right here uh, that, uh, that I got for you as well. This is a paint set that is perfect for painting what we're painting right now, Napoleonic soldiers. You got your blue, your gr perfect green, black, I think this is actually gray right here, London gray. Uh, this is, I think, oily steel, which would be like for the for the guns. And then uh, we got some gold and some some bronze, I think, here. Is that what this is? I don't know. But these are really good colors. Uh, Vallejo model color would be really great. Um, and then so you'll see how we use them uh, to paint in just a couple minutes here. Uh, but first, though, what we're going to do is we're going to do something called dry brushing, okay? And this is the secret uh, to why you paint it black first, and then you do what's called dry brushing on some white. And we're, to do that, we're going to use uh, apple barrel paints. This little bit of apple barrel paints is just perfect. I've been using it for a long time, and it's kind of chunky, so i got to shake it up a little bit. But you know you don't you don't need it to be great paint uh, to do this part. You just squeeze out a little bit there, and I'm taking the same brush, the same big brush that I'm used that I used before. I'm kind of squeezing it out a little bit, get some of the water out, some of the other paint out of it, and I'm just taking a little bit of this white paint here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get even more of that white paint off just by spreading it on this piece of cardboard here. We just need a little bit of paint on there to make this work, okay? Then I'll zoom in so you can see the effect. Take shape here, hopefully. What you do, you come over here, and you start from the top, and you just brush down. And see how that brings out, maybe you can't see it, I can see it, but it's really awesome. It brings out the texture and the, the shape of the model. Do you see that? So, let me try to show it to you better. I don't know if it's getting on the mirror. Maybe you can see it better now, but it's really, really pretty cool, if you ask me. I'm not quite if, sure if I can see it very well, but I uh, hope it shows up for you. But that way, you see where the cross belt is, you see where all, all of the, uh, the pants are, where the shirt and the pants mix, and where where the hat is, where the flesh is. You can even see his nose and, uh, and all the details of his face and things like that. And uh, on the back here, you can see where other things are too. And so that's why I do that first. I'm going to give him a little bit more of this because I think some of it, uh, you know, kind of soaked in with the black to make a gray. So you just give it a little bit more. you can see it better now. I don't know if that's focusing right or probably. See that? All right. Hopefully 
that'll work. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna wash this brush out again. We can set it aside, we don't need it anymore. What we need now is we need a smaller, littler brush. So we don't have to wait too long now to paint more on this guy because he is set and ready to paint. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint, first of all, I'm gonna paint the, uh, the uh, um, whatchamacallit stuff, uh, the red stuff and the gray stuff. Uh, and the reason for that is because that way um, I can paint on top of that to get the white straps and all the other uh, accoutrements, as they say in French. And I'm using the, uh, uh, the, the dark vermilion paint because that'll be his, uh, his uh, whatchamacallit, uh, his uh, red tunic, red coat. Shaking it all the way up. You gotta shake these things really well. A lot. <laughs> I'll just show you. I'll show you shaking it here. Okay, you gotta really, really shake it up. I mean, a lot. But then it'll get it all mixed up just right. And keep shaking it or else it'll be messy and icky. And you won't want to use it. <laughs> all right. That done. Let's get this out here. Pour just a little bit out. Oh yeah, see, it's just perfect, huh? Okay, and get just, that's all you need. Maybe just a little bit more, but right there, that's all you need, just a little, little dab, okay? And then get my brush out here and get a little bit of water on it so it softens the bristles just enough to absorb more. And I, I'm not even using any water on this because I think that we're going to be just fine without it. Um, now, okay, maybe I'll put a little bit on there. Just a wee bit. That's enough. And I'll mix it all together. There. That's, that's pretty good. Now, um, so you, you want it to run just a little bit. So it's just a little bit runny, but not too much at all. Um, and what I'm going to do... I'm going to start on his arm here and just paint it on like that. And then uh, get on his tunic here a little bit. And you don't have to worry if you paint his belt, okay? Because even if you paint his belt, um, you're going to be painting over that with white anyway. So it doesn't matter. You don't have to worry about making a mistake there. And there, is that around there? Got to get this little bit right here because uh, on his back, that is important. And if you see, like, I just messed up a little bit there. I painted a little bit on his pants. Doesn't matter. I'll be able to paint that in the next step. And we got to get this arm here, too. All right. Perhaps you can see him better now. <laughs> but you can see that there are some natural places here that are a little bit more um, black than others. I try to you know, make sure I get those painted in. And the paint itself is translucent, meaning you can see through it a little bit. I'm gonna make sure my hand doesn't get in the way. You know, I, I, what I should do is this. Um, just pause for just a second here. Lie a little bit and I moved everything just enough. So hopefully this means that you can see better and I don't get my hand in the way of the model anymore. I think it's focusing on that. Anyway, um, hopefully you can see that there are parts of the paint that look darker than others, and that's because we did, we did it in black first, okay? So there, there you go. There, his red is all done. Now what we need to do is we need to do the gray. All right, I just added my water to the gray there. And there we go. All, you can see here, all mixed up and kind of runny, just a little bit, not too much, but there it is. Okay, and then we're gonna put the gray on, right where his pants should be, right there. Hopefully, you can see what I'm doing there, maybe. Try not to get my hand in the way. 
This is an interesting idea to paint while videoing. I've never done this before, or maybe once before, and I'm sure I made a hash of it. But uh, there we go. That's, that's all the gray that we need to paint except for one last detail. One last detail is his gray coat right up here. So we got to get that too. And that's easily gotten. You don't have to worry about painting over the straps. You're going to get those with white when the time comes. So there we go. All gray done. And easy peasy, lemon squeezy, as they say. Do kids still say that? I don't know. Maybe you can tell me, Xavier. <laughs> okay. Now we got that done. Uh, next, I'm going to paint this little thing right here, the uh, canteen here. I'm going to paint that. Um, I think that we could paint it blue. And you might want to mix this blue with, uh, with some white to make a light blue. Um, because the canteens were light blue, if memory serves right, with a white outline and a buff. Anyway, you know, you, you get the picture. So, I mean, they, they, they do some good color matching here for uniforms, but you might need a little bit of mixing to make it just right. But I'm not even going to use water to water this stuff down this time. Uh, so you see here, I've got my blue and my white right there. Now I just take a little bit of blue right over here and a little bit of white and mix it around right there. I have more than enough light blue right there to paint just that little bit there. <laughs> See? Wow, that just pops out, doesn't it? There we go. That's good. Now, why don't we paint the gun barrel? Or not the gun barrel. Why don't we paint the, uh, the wood part of the gun? And that's the one thing. Oh, there, Marin Curl. Ah, this right here. Yeah, Saddle Brown. Hey, they did provide a brown for you. That's good. All right. Then we'll get that gun painted. At least the, the brown part. We might even paint some hair on the back of them. Might be a good thing to do, huh? Some brown hair. All right. And look, see, I'm doing all of this stuff with a brush that's kind of big, you know, but, you know, the point is, is that it has, it comes to a point. <laughs> All right. And as you get more and more skilled, you'll be able to figure out exactly where to put the point of your brush. And that's the skill that you need to develop to paint this stuff. But it's not... It's not hard, you know, it just takes practice. Um, this stuff is not hard to do, as everybody says it is. If I can do it, anybody can do it. That's my thought, but it takes practice and patience and stick to it It'd be a good thing to learn. All right, there, that's the brown, that's all we need. You know, you, you even see here, I left that unpainted there because I know that that's going to be white. That's the strap for his musket, okay? So I don't even need to paint that part there. I just need to paint that. And I, don't e I didn't really need to paint the top of it here either because that's going to be painted with that gunmetal color, you know? Uh, so there's a lot of going on there. Hopefully you can see it all. All right, now we're going to do the black. And we, we did black already, and we still have some that's still usable. So that's what I'm going to use right here, just that black right there. we got to get the shoes. We'll make those black. Nice black, shiny shoes. Maybe you're mixing a little bit with that gray, but that'll be okay, I think. You won't notice it too much, I don't think. Uh, it just looks like his pant legs are coming down a little too far. Then we want to get the backpack here, too side of the backpack, like that there, and this part of the backpack. I think these things were black leather, if memory serves right. I don't remember exactly, but, you know, and if you get some paint on the straps, it doesn't matter, because you're going to be painting over those in just a little bit. So, other side of the backpack here. 
And then the cartridge box was also black. The cartridge box right there. Pretty easy to paint that up. Really nice. Okay. Then we've got to get his hat. The Shaco. Okay. Well, I decided not to paint his hair, but I guess you could paint his hair black at this point. <laughs> so the top of the Shaco. Making sure you can see this thing. I think you can. There. All right. Pretty good. Pretty good. So far, he's starting to look like he's coming alive a little bit. You know, that's the funnest part about this, to see him come alive and how it all works out. And then, let's see. What should we paint next? We start with the white. No, I think we need to get this little, see there's like a little haversack in there, down on the bottom there. We're going to get that buff. That's it's going to be a buff color. Like uh, this, uh, let's see, it's this color right here, the amarillo khaki <laughs> color buff. So there we are. Give it a nice good shake. Hopefully it'll work out. And we don't need to mix it with water because you know, all we need is a bit, just a little bit, even, you know, that might, just to, just that little dab might be too much, <laughs> but, you know, just for one, for one guy. When you do this, what you want to do is you want to mix up, um, you, you, you want to, you want to get like 20 guys ready to paint and paint them all one right after the other, doing one part at a time. And then, uh, You'll see how it all comes together, you know. It'll all start to look really awesome. It might take a while, but that's okay. Got all the time in the world. <laughs> all right. Got that done. And now, well, I think it is time to tackle the white part. And this right here, I will tell you, is the hardest part about painting a British soldier. And in fact, I'll probably make it look easy, <laughs> but I want to tell you, do not get discouraged if you don't get this right the first time. It is all right. Um, well, at first, though, I think I'm going to paint his cuffs. I'm going to use those, use that blue to do that. So, like there, there are these, uh, there are these parts on his on his uh, uh, arm that are cuffed. See there? That that was to show the color of the regiment. And there's also a part up here on his on his uh, around his neck that has that same color too. If you don't get these things painted, you don't have to, okay? Um, but just for the sake of completing it, I'll do that there. And there's some nice blue there and there. And then on the other hand cuff right here as well. So some didn't have blue, some had red, some had green. You know, cuffs and green uh, collars, but uh, you know that just showed the regiment that this guy was from. Okay, that could be like I think it's like the uh, oh I don't know, it might be the, it's the Queen's Own or something like that. You know, I don't know. <laughs> the book might tell you that. I'm giving you a book too, so you know, <laughs> you'll see that. All right, so where was I? Oh yeah, the white. The white. <laughs> Shake it up. And you might ask yourself, why am I not using this white right here? Well, it's clumpy. It was just for the, uh, for the uh, you know, it's the apple barrel white. This white here is meant to be used on miniatures, and so we're going to use it to paint up the bits there. Don't need much. Uh, and I'm not even going to thin it with paint because it's got to be, it's got to go on kind of. So, simply get down through there. So first what I do is I paint what's called the cross belts. Okay. And that's good enough for the cross belts right there. And then I get in here and I paint the, uh, this right here is like the backpack strap on the guy. 
change this little bit right there just enough and there's just enough room right here to paint this backpack strap as it goes down through there make sure we get the cross belt looking pretty good there and then there's a couple of little things right here like button things that are also white that I paint as well but if you don't want to paint those little bits you don't have to you know even if you don't even want to paint the cross belt I don't care about that but I'm just showing you how I do it just in case uh, you know you wondered then we get to paint his backpack here this little bit little backpack right here there is a strap that comes down like this another one that comes down like that and then the straps that are holding his great coat there looks pretty good I'm a little out of touch a little out of practice and also this is kind of a weird angle for me to paint at because I'm trying to record it too and down here there's a, like a little bit of white that goes down there as well, right by, right by his butt. <laughs> All right. Then here we can paint the strap around the uh, canteen. Going like that. Like so. Oh, I'll get that straightened out. Oop. Yeah, that's better. There. Starting to look pretty good. And you can also paint there like these little button things on the cuffs as well. Like I say, if you don't want to do this, you don't have to. I only get like two little streaks on there and call it good because you know, I just can't see it that well. And if I can't see it, nobody else would wonder about it too. Yeah, I might get that better right there. And back behind here like that as well. Yeah. All right, all right, so there. There you have the white painted on there too. Pretty, pretty easy, not too hard. Looks like a British soldier, that's what you want. And now we get to make him come, oh, I forgot a couple other things. First of all, before we paint the flesh, <laughs> before we paint the flesh, we've got to get the uh, steel and the um, brass painted as well okay and I'm gonna use shining silver for his for his uh, um, whatchamacallit for his uh, bayonet so that needs to be nice and flashy okay, first of all the steel and there's two spots where the steel needs to be painted on this model the first spot is pretty easy to see it's just the gun barrel okay so you just got to go right in here like this and just paint right down whoops <laughs> and if you mess up do not worry about it too much just paint right down there and there you go there's his gun barrel okay and I usually paint this stuff a little bit here too but the next spot I paint this steel I don't know it might not be the best thing but then he has this little bayonet um, little bayonet uh, scabbard right here that I paint steel as well uh, just for the fun of it okay all right and then let's get his brass stuff painted as well okay and there's a couple little things to do with this with the brass if he had what's called a face plate you could paint that but I don't think this Shaco model has a face plate some of them do some of them don't some of them were wrapped in a cloth all the way around it didn't have the faceplate on him and I think that's that this model has but some of them do have like a noticeable faceplate and you want to put a little dab of brass on that uh, too okay so this right here this little thing right here is like the clip that holds the two um, chest belts in place and that, that gets to be brass and then uh, all of the the little pieces on the gun that are actually involved in firing the gun those like the hammer and the the pan and all that other stuff that stuff has got to be brass as well and you can also paint the butt of the gun brass but you know don't need to that's pretty good all right now 
Man, I have a cat. You want to see this here? This is this is funny. So like, the cat has come and decided to see my miniature painting. <laughs> now he's going away. You gotta go away now, cat. There you go. All right. <laughs> now we get the fun part. Oh, first, first. Uh, before that, I'm using some of my own paint here. This is called Shining Silver. And you can get this at a, at a game store. I'm sure you can find it. Or you can even get it at like a Hobby Lobby. Uh, and and uh, I'm using that to paint the bayonet because I think it looks better than the steel. That's what I think. Uh, it's a little more flashy, but, you know, um, you can just use steel, too. It doesn't matter uh, which way you do it. So yeah, that's just what I'm doing for this model. So I just get in there. There. And there we go. Okay. There it is. He's looking pretty good. But he's not, he's, it doesn't really come alive until you get his face painted and his hands painted, if you ask me. I think it looks even more impressive when you get that part done. So that's the next part. All right. There's the flesh. And, you know, some people are able to paint eyeballs at this scale. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> you know, painting eyeballs for 100 miniatures is painting 200 eyeballs, and that's 200 eyeballs too many. But here we go. There's his flesh. here okay and the other hand is gripping the gun but so we need to be extra careful with that one so we don't paint the gun again there <laughs> there he is yeah, that was fun now that's probably the first miniature that I've painted in a long time Xavier and so here, well actually no it's not I the first 28 millimeter miniature I painted in a long time I, I'll show you something else here real quick okay see this over here these guys are Civil War soldiers <laughs> that are that are 10 millimeters tall you see there's a big difference between them those two that's pretty cool but um, yeah and these these are from the same company actually uh, but uh, these this is their epic scale and so I'm using those to paint Civil War stuff yeah Anyway, there we have it. There he sits. There's one more thing you could do. And uh, um, that is, you could give him a wash. And this, right, this stuff right here is called Citadel Shade Nuln Oil. And uh, I think that that's one of the most effective washes. But actually, I think I'm going to do this one instead. This is called um, Agrax Earthshade. This is better for uh, what I want to do with this model. Um, it, it's better on flesh. That stuff would be good on like rock and stuff like that. But it doesn't take much of this. But you'll see what happens. This stuff is like like really watered down brown ink. And what it does is when you paint it on there, it'll get caught in all of those. Ow! Cat, stop it! Ow! Get away. Okay. You don't need much of this. Ah, that hurt. But when you paint it on there, it'll get caught in all those little little uh, spots that should be darker. And uh, it'll make for a more interesting model. You know, so if you paint some on his face, and it'll get caught in the spots of his face that are like eyes and cheeks and stuff like that so you can see him even better. And then we just wait for him to dry. So, um, yeah. There we go. All done.
Let me show you up close here. Hopefully you'll be able to see it really well here. Here's the back of him. And he's pretty well done. So that's your model. Have fun painting them. I think I'm done. <laughs>